Come on. Who are you gonna get me? This is just, this is my last night on my week long trip. This is just such a beautiful spot. And so this is the spot I'm currently camped at. Public land, it's Bureau of Land Reclamation, uh, which from what I Googled is essentially similar to BLM. Beautiful though, right on a lake. There's so much life here because of the water. So I'm in the middle of Nevada right now. The classic reveal. Look at that. Good morning. And we're gonna be talking today about just adventuring. I've never experienced stuff like this in my life. So it's just been really cool. But there's also been some pros, there's been some cons. So let's talk through those. Today's a very special day because it officially is the mark of one full week in the van living on the road. And this has been my dream for so long. Ever since I got the Jeep and started going out and adventuring, I knew it was gonna go one of two ways. Either I wanted to keep doing it and dive in, or I was just not gonna be for me. And I'm so happy to finally be in this scenario where I'm out in a van, I have all the conveniences of home, or most of them, but I wanna talk through what it's like actually experiencing this, right? Because you have this perception. It's the whole perception versus reality scenario. My first night out, I was not in a panic, like that's overreacting, but I was kind of like, ooh, this is tough. Like you don't have a ton of space, you have limited resources, and I was questioning how long I could actually be out for. By days two, days three, you start to find your rhythm. And that's when you start to settle in. You learn the space. I learned where all the buttons are for things. Oh, the water pumps off. Hey, I need to turn on these lights over here. And it just becomes, you know, muscle memory at that point. And you just kind of know where things are. And by the third, fourth day, I was like, oh, I could totally do this for a long time. Where's the pooch? I think my pooch could do this for a while too. She loves being out in nature. But what it does for you is it makes you really question what do you need? And the things you do have are there ways to limit your use of them? So like food, right? You you have somewhat limited food, what you can fit inside of this. Uh, everything's in my fridge that I'm consuming in terms of food, and that hasn't been an issue. And then outside of that, water. Water's a big constraint, and it's interesting to see like my gray tank versus my fresh tank, because I am consuming most of the water. I'm creating very little wastewater, and that's either from doing dishes or the one or two times I'll take a shower in the van. And I gotta say, I actually don't mind this thing. At first I was like, it sounds terrible. It was a great experience. I almost like this better than the KOA showers. So Halo shower is awesome, toilet, I've also done a mix this week. So I've done basically four days out in BLM, public land uh, in the middle of nowhere. And then I did three days at a KOA and that was somewhat out of necessity where I was picking up all the parts at Al Vans. There's not a ton of options in terms of free or public land. So I was gonna pay for something anyway and I've never been to a KOA. In terms of working, creating coffee, food, everything else, you are gonna fall into a routine super quickly. I like the layout of the storyteller because I can sit here, I can sit in the driver's seat, passenger seat, I can sit in the little groove lounge area, I can lay in the back, I can put the one side up and I have a working bench. For me, because it's been so cold outside, um, which has been a pain, that's no fun for me is like, I wanna spend time outside of the van. That's why I got an adventure van. And I've had to spend so much time inside of it this week, aside from when I was in Northern California but the ability to move around and fidget helps so much. I do have a little bit of rebel envy in terms of their fixed shower and toilet. The toilet is a nightmare. I can't stand the toilet situation in this van and I'm gonna try to figure out how I build something. I think I do prefer the cassette toilet. Originally I was talking about maybe doing a black tank in here. I don't think that's gonna happen, but the Revel having the external cassette that you can easily access, you don't have to deal with it leaking, anything like that. And just frankly, having the cassette toilet inside of here, it basically sits in where the shower drain is. Like emptying that 
getting it separated, it's not a good design. I'll let you guys know what I figure out, and I don't obviously want to talk about toilets too much, but it's a huge part of living in something. My dad and I had a saying when I was younger, and I think we still <laughs> live by this motto, that if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And it's true, right? We like tinkering, we like taking things apart, making them better, and so that's just going to be a natural evolution of this van as I own it. That's why I went to Al. This thing next week is going to be such a badass van. Uh, we're getting some really good off-road goodies upgraded put on it in Denver. I'm using their new install location. If you didn't know, they just opened one in Denver, but I had to pick up the parts over in NorCal. I just wanted to make an adventure trip out of it and also save on shipping. So it was a win-win for me. The Cell Booster, I have the WeBoost Drive Reach RV. Um, it was basically the most powerful one you can find from them. Heavily, heavily recommend. Actually where I'm at right now, I have basically no bars on my phone, which is AT&T, and then my hotspot's Verizon. So Cell Boosters are critical, especially if you want to work from the road. But I think in general, we live in such a connected world that anything like that is such a nice upgrade to have just to know if you need to contact someone for any safety reasons or just to talk to a friend or to let someone know where you are. It's a good, good backup to have. So I love that booster. I'll link it below. Um, definitely recommend it from what I've seen in practice. So where all this is leading me to is you're going to always, any new home, anything you buy, right? You're going to have a lot of pros and a lot of cons. The first times you're using it, you might be a little apprehensive and start questioning yourself and thinking like, is this even possible? Can I do this? Just push through it and you'll get there. You'll find out, okay, these are how things work. These are how things don't work. This is what I want to tweak. This is what works well. And that's kind of where I am now. I love this. I'd say 90% is just amazing, incredible. And I'm so happy that it now feels like a home to me and it's comfortable. Having been a week now on the road, I could totally spend more time in this with no issue. My only gripe is that it's freezing outside. Uh, almost everywhere I've been living in Denver now, it's getting really cold. As always, hit that thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more of my adventures. I know I keep saying this, but I will still hold true to some of the other content we've done on this channel in the past. It won't just be van life, but this is a huge part of my life right now, so I want to make sure you all can enjoy and experience that. Comments below for a reason. Ask any questions, leave any feedback. It's been awesome so far having this van. I'm glad you're joining me on this adventure. As always, it's been a pleasure, and I'll see you next time.